um, in, in life and in food as well, I love a little bit of class and a little bit of, you know, I, I like to be, to be treated well, I'd say. And yeah. so this is the philosophy I employ in my restaurants. So one of them is called Embak. We call it Embak because for us, when you come and you sit, it's the beginning of a journey, mm -hmm. you know? And we take it through different tastes, different variations, different combination of things, you know? Um, and the concept for Embark is it's 12 people only. So the restaurant is a 12-seater. Okay. Uh, we do seven to around 12 courses. Uh, it's opened Wednesdays till Saturdays, and it's for dinner only, you know? Uh, we recently got the perfect spot for it and it's a it's, it's one area that it's that is sectioned into four so the concept is the guest comes and every other area is closed you know so they come and they can lounge for an hour or so after the lunch we open the area to sit down and have um, speciality teas or coffee or certain cocktails we come up with Exactly. After that, the other path is open, and that's where they dine. And so every place else is now, you know, open into one place. So that one, the second one is a bistro. Um, the bistro is open Monday to Monday, um, and it's much more, you know, like for people who love bigger portion uh, meat and this type of stuff, a place where you could go have a beer, have all of these things. And um, the last one that we're opening in, in, in three to four weeks is a dessert bar. Okay. So, yeah, so the concept is the same. I wanted to have, it's only going to have 12 people. Um, and it's basically desserts, diff savory desserts, sweets, whatever, from start to finish. But aside from that, uh, we have a lady called Jennifer who does very nice specialty teas that we will include there. And we're trying to get Rwanda for, uh, to get uh, coffee from all over Africa as well, just to supplement the, the desserts. Yeah. That so I like tiny concepts that have yeah. life, so to speak, and a little bit of um, class and some dignity. Yeah. Here. That is great. Yep. That's great. Yep. Uh, which one is your favorite? Which one? Uh, is my favorite, favorite is Mbak. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the embark the the, yeah. the one I mentioned because because with embark it's um it's it's amazing both for the for the guests and for us because yeah. with embark we we challenge ourselves I mean just last year only we made around 141 dishes you yeah. know so embark is amazing because we we challenge ourselves it it I mean we must research and research and educate ourselves and study and yeah. do a whole lot of concepts sometimes you have one guest who books like four times definitely they cannot have the same experience every time so it's um it's good for the patron because we push ourselves to bring the best for them but it's also good for us because they refine us um in return in in looking at you know greater horizons and having to explore the most Great. And um, yeah. so you don't have a set menu, right? It's, it keeps variating all the time. Exactly. Exact. Actually, the menu for all of these uh, places keep keep changing. Yeah. Like because, every because day I believe, or uh, weekly sometimes, or sometimes, monthly? sometimes, sometimes some dishes change daily. Sometimes they change weekly. Sometimes they change uh, monthly. I'm, I'm really afraid of, of, of the crystallization of a menu. I mean, yeah. having it just there for a year is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. And don't you, are you not afraid of like lacking of inspiration sometimes? Ah, um, uh, funny enough, I'm not <laughs> because yeah. I don't know. I listen, I listen to, I'm really inspired by um, composers and orchestral music and whatever. Oh, okay. And I, I, I cannot recall, I, it either, I think it's uh, Tchaikovsky or, or someone else who said, um, inspiration is for amateurs. And, and, and I believe this. I believe this because, I mean, you know this because you had a kitchen as well. Most of the time, we are inspired. Yeah. 
when we're in the middle of doing some work, correct? I think where we see people, uh, you know, sleeping and boom, inspiration hits and they, I don't think it works like this in the real world, you know? Yeah. And so I'm driven more, driven more by actualizing ideas and I find inspiration while I'm actually doing this as opposed to sitting back and waiting for a glimmer of hope to go and start to create um, That's great. recipes, yeah. Uh, are you in contact with uh, a lot of, of um, chefs, as in um, English-speaking chefs, most like chefs from other English-speaking country? Do you guys have contacts uh, or something? Do you know some of them? Yeah, 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 I do, I do, I do. Um, and, 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 and funny enough is, I really pick uh, which ones that I choose to to have a relation with because as as we said earlier we have we have so many people bastardizing our career yeah, we yeah, we have yeah, people yeah. you know just yeah prostituting mm -hmm. the name creativity yeah. and da 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 and yeah, ju I just agree. for the sake you know as a marketing gimmick or whatever mm -hmm. so I keep contact with chefs who are really 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 interested and care about the aspect of really creating as opposed to looking like people who create you know and um i'm curious i want to know if you think that english speaking chefs as in yourself have something like different a different uh, approach different view of the cuisine that you have maybe something that makes your cuisine very different from ours as in uh french speaking countries um I, like something that makes that, your cuisine unique you know i don't unique, know if you've yeah. been to uh um, french speaking country before maybe yeah, i don't I've know i've been yeah. to i've been to 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 I, i've been to france for like a week i've been in 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 rwanda for like a month so, so think, what do you think <laughs> do you think you have a special something that makes your cuisine unique i mean when i say your i mean in general you know in general Yeah. Um, I, um, you know, I, I don't think so. I think, I think the uniqueness we see in, 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 in the great chefs or the great people in either whatever has a lot to do with um, how they actualize the idea more than what form of linguistical aspects each is born into. You know, it's like it's. It's like in this so moment, the, um, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I, I might see your ideas and, and maybe you might be miles ahead yeah. of okay. anyone that mm -hmm. is within the circle that I know yet. Yeah. Okay, okay. So it's more about maybe the background and influences people have that the, the language itself? itself? I, I think so. That and yeah. the, the, and the, and the, and the brain. Ideas, yeah. I exact I think the brain covers up covers for like 98% 98% eight of that uh, because we I mean we we're able to see as an example we're able to see a chef who basically has nothing come up with ideas and actualize them and 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 change a whole lot as opposed to someone who has everything going on for them And they can't put the simplest things together, you know. So yeah. the background, the background plays a part, yes, but it's it's the brain and the choice of this chef that overrides everything else. I believe. I believe yeah. Okay. Nice. And speaking of background, how was it for you to go from football to culinary, as in uh, for your relatives, for the people you know, for the people around you? How 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 was it for them? Ah, so so for me, I think one one of the one of the greatest things that have helped me in life is that I, I really I, I don't care about um, <laughs> <laughs> about I don't really care a lot about and I and not in an arrogant way. I don't I don't mean that I'll do whatever I want. Like oh, today I will decide to run naked and I don't care about <laughs> what. No, not in that way. Yeah. But in the sense that I am aware that if I make a decision. The, the consequence, whether positive or negative, I must accept, correct? Yeah. 
And so when I said, okay, I want to be, I want to be a chef, you had my mom, my mom on my neck, like, Dennis, you know, why don't you, uh, every day she was asking me, Dennis, do you want to go to Canada? No, do you want to go to, you know, like to take on another yeah. job and do this type uh -huh. of stuff? And, and, and every time I was telling her, listen, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> if, if I decide I want to be a chef yeah. and at night I go and sleep on the street, it's my choice. This is what I want. So in, in a very respectful way, I think I, I never, once I decide on something, I, I, I really never, almost certainly never care to listen to what anyone else would tell me. So I, it, it was a little bit um, simple for me in that in that manner. That is nice. That's a yeah. nice way of seeing things, I think. Yeah, it's, I, it's I, great. I, 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 yeah, exactly. Great. Because my, I remember my, my, my dad used to tell me, listen, um, uh, make, make the choice and accept the, the consequence, consequence, whether, yeah. yeah, whether good or bad. Don't, never make choices and only accept the good, you, you know, uh, take the street with the cows, you'd say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you do you think of um, exporting your cuisine, as in maybe to a restaurant somewhere else in Africa, or you want to stay in Kenya? Uh, uh, okay, I can do a restaurant anywhere else in Africa, but it would have to be one hundred percent me because what I have found that like what we spoke before, um, Africa is a place where. Most restaurants are owned by businessmen, not by chefs. And, and so the vision, the starting point of the vision is usually just miles apart, you know? And this affects, believe it or not, how far the cuisine develops, you know? And so I've always held to the point that if I am to start it someplace else, the key thing I'd look at is not even the market, but... Um, the starting point, the ownership, and how I want to, to drive it forward. So I'm definitely open to that. And of course, I'm really, it's exciting to find new ingredients, to find new produce to work with, to find, to face the challenges that come with having to put your mind in a totally different environment. Yeah. That, that brings me to question. First of all, uh, aren't you afraid of becoming a businessman if you start like growing up a lot of restaurants everywhere? Like you know, if you are four, five, six, seven, how do you how do you cope? Like how do you keep your 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 uniqueness if you have to be everywhere and if you have to have like a, because it's gonna be a business finally, you know, if you have them all everywhere. Mm -hmm. Aren't you afraid of that? Um, I'll, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why I'm not afraid of that because the end goal for me is not for Dennis to be known. I mean, I, I do not care okay. if, if, if I'm famous or not, I do not care, but what, what, what I put in place is this. So I'll give you an example with my team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've worked the oldest member in my team, not in terms of age, but in terms of the relation. Uh, we've worked together five years. The youngest, we've worked together, I think, four months now. And okay. what I do is this. Um, I have the core team. And from this team is where I want all the opportunities that could come to branch out. So, for example, I have the core team. And when I open the bistro, it's one share. Chef from my team who gets promoted to head chef there. It's uh, one lady in my team who is the head chef there. So if I get to open a restaurant, for mm -hmm. example, in Ivory Coast, it's one person from my team who go to be the chef okay. there, and I will recruit or handpick so another one to join. This, this okay. way, we enter up exactly because I'm looking at it um, at a point where if I could use painting to or art to explain this. Um, I, I, I put a lot and invest a lot in the education of my chefs because I want us to reach a level where in painting terms, like if I want to paint you, for example, I could come and I could paint your eye and my chefs could have so much knowledge and the DNA of what we do that I could leave and someone could come and finish you off you. and know exactly what I wanted without having to speak here. So this is like the 
the long term for me because at the end um what i want to leave is 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 the knowledge not not my name i really don't care too much about that yeah and second are you are you um are you using a lot of um like traditional ingredients like ingredients typical from like you know uh, from kenya or are you just mixing everything not caring about what you're using is it is it something important for you to yeah to to use ingredient from kenya or you don't care um i think a little bit of both a little bit of both because 50 50 because of this number one if i'm in kenya i must ch challenge educate and 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 reuse whatever is grown here first of all you know the second thing is sometimes there are some things we want that are not in our proximity you know or 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 sometimes like with the new wave in cooking where we speak about local 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 you know one of the things i we speak in our team is so how far is local because for example if if i could find a portobello mushroom 600 kilometers away does it make me more or less local because it's within that okay. geographical area you know yeah. if mm -hmm. i want crayfish and i could only get crayfish from lake kivu so it has to come all of you know this type yeah. of thing so okay. i would yeah, say yeah. i would say ingredients are one of these things that are so so universal i mean look look at look at uh, pasta dumpling it the the chinese and the asians were cooking this long before the italians ever yeah. thought about it but now it's synonymous to italy only you know so yeah. ingredients are they don't care about human geography i feel yeah, they only express or expose themselves through but don't you think that as as chefs as uh, sure. uh, so i'd say both so i do both i use whatever's okay. here okay don't you think that as african chef we have like we also have a duty to promote our farmers, our agricultural, our products. Don't you think we have to do that in some way? Definitely. What? Well, yeah. I, I think I think every I think every chef in Africa should do that. And 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 part of that is not actually so part of that is not actually just saying um you know what um, I think Ali Ali grows tomatoes I will buy from her. Mm -hmm. It's not um i urge chefs to go even deeper into that in that to invest in the science in the mechanisms in the ways in which this person could be able to yield different crop because everything has its own season and performs differently within different times of the season you know to go deeper and be able to provide alternatives for the same farmer to be able to produce a certain crop That's for this person every single time you know so we 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 end up in a situation where we have one person yes but this one person is able to cater to the needs of his or her farm her profession and my needs as well in a very well rounded manner you know this is where i feel some african chefs are not are not doing what they're saying um in terms of being ethical but rather as a marketing gimmick yeah to be able as i say to move forward as a cohort so that is the responsibility that i think um we should we should do and it's part of what we do in my team you know so that's what i'd say about about that okay okay i agree but that that's that's very wise actually i haven't i haven't think about that this way but this is really like this yeah. way of going deeper is really interesting this is really something we should do actually like help them to you know do better that is super interesting yeah, yeah. exactly exactly we should we should do that and 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 farming should be i think part of the education because the average mm -hmm. farmer i think in my country the average farmer is mm -hmm. around 45 um what happens mm -hmm. in 20 years you can imagine yeah. how much we're losing okay because the 18 year old does not think farming is cool you know so on the forefront we look like we are winning you know but you enter yeah. inside and see the nitty gritties 
Yeah, and you find <laughs> we're nowhere. Yeah, 400 years past, 600 years past, whatever, and we're nowhere. And how is, how is culinary school, how are culinary school in Kenya? Because, for example, here in Ivory Coast, I know it's like you learn most, mostly, you, you learn theory. You don't really practice. So we have like people that come for internship and don't even know how to cut an onion, you know? So how is yeah. it? How is it? <laughs> how is it in Kenya? I think I think that's an African problem because okay. <laughs> you know my my honest opinion is that culinary schools in 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 Africa are just cash cows and and I will not name names because I know some culinary schools that are so tiny from the grassroots and some that have all the money in the world yeah and you know that the the product of the culinary school is the individual after they graduate so if an individual comes from graduation and they come for internship and they cannot cut an onion, we should already judge your school as having yeah. failed, not the individual, yeah. correct? Yeah, exactly. And this is this cuts across the board. So culinary schools here, I think, are just um, cash cows, if I'm, if, yeah. if I'm honest. Um, and they're run by people who do not care about the education. You know, and and th and that's the biggest tragedy. That's why we keep on having an output of less and less and less and less knowledge for the individual, while they spend premium in trying to pay for an education that the educators themselves have no idea what they're doing. Is it is it why you you decided to educate yourself? Is it one of the reasons why you decided to to learn by yourself? Definitely, um, definitely, 100%. That's one reason. The other reason is I'm, I'm a firm believer in life that, listen, if you have a passion, you are, you are most responsible for that. Not, not your government, not your mom, not your dad. No one owes you money or favors or whatever. So primarily, it's you. Secondly, um, I, I'm aware that we get the least of the least in terms of the know-how about things here um i never wanted to be that it's because i, I care i care about what's gonna happen you, you know ali after we're dead i care i care about what restaurants and the food scene is gonna look like what type of knowledge yeah. people are gonna have and so uh with this it pushes you to do some other things i mean we're only in this moment discussing with a few of uh, some great minds who are friends of mine about a school actually and, and, and we're just toying around with the idea of having a school that, that handpicks only 20 students a year, okay? But these 20 students have the access yeah. Yeah. to so much information or information that's consequential that would enable them to be able to pass it on to another two. You know, if, if 20 students can pass some info to two students, they've oh, doubled yeah, up on what we could offer. Okay, and da, 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 da. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't know. Th this is some of the things that we're thinking about because it's fun. In, in Kenya, for example, I mean, guys are so obsessed with wine, you know, and 99% and, and of the wine we import, yet we're the best, one of the best in terms of tea. So why, I mean, why are culinary students not yeah. taught about tea? Tea, Come yeah. on. I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what's is, going uh, on? Something that is, yeah, okay, I understand. I understand. You know, so, so why are we not taught about coffee? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, some of these things baffle The funny me. thing is, for me, if we did my, 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 um, my school in France, we have thought about coffee and tea from everywhere. You know, even Africa, I was surprised, you know, to see uh, that the, the tea and uh, coffee from Africa were in the books, actually. But here in our country, we, we don't, we know nothing about that. That is, that is sad. Also, that is sad. Not, because here, here we're interested in looking like we know yeah. as opposed to really mm -hmm. knowing what, yeah. what, what we need to do. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> and you can see the effects here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you said you went to France. What did you, what did you think? the cuisine of the, the restaurants over there? 
What oh is my your goodness, uh, <laughs> Ali, Ali, uh, Ali for, forgive me because I was only there for like a week and all I ate was pizza. So forgive oh, me. Oh, no, that, that is, that is, wow. Yeah, oh, I don't, I do forgive, not forgive you. For, I do not forgive you. Forgive me, please. <laughs> you know, but, but in terms of, um, I, I'll speak about this from a general perspective. Yeah. Uh, at, at a point in time, France offered or played its part in the development of cuisine. I will give them that, you know? But what I see in France now is that, I don't know, you tell me, do, do, do you realize like all Michelin star restaurants are starting to look the same or do yeah. the same thing? Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. And, and so, I don't know, it's like it's this. Just, it's like I think there is standards everywhere. You have to be like this, do like this in order to have the stars or you can't compete. Yeah. I see what you yeah, mean. And yeah. so and so I feel there's a lot of innovation and very little creation. Yeah. You know? True. And, that, that's exactly uh, and that's, that's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that. and that's a little bit just uh, <laughs> it's it's a turn off in a way, but I yeah. don't know, we'll see. And what do you say what do you think of all the you know, the culinary competitions, all the T V shows, all those chefs that you can see all over the T V. What do you think about that? What is your opinion? My opinion? Um, like the fact, opinion, especially yeah. the fact that you know uh, that chefs are everywhere on TV except in their restaurant. What do you think about that? My my true opinion is I think chefs are being given like a whole lot of power and mm. and voice. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and this is hurting to the career. And people, someone who's not on the stripes, you know, you, you're having someone who's never led two people to agree on one thing, being called a chef or having to go as a chef. Uh, number two, um, I think we are romanticizing the, the, the work, yeah. the skill the, and the yeah, career. The, the, exactly, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's crazy because now we have people thinking, oh, Uh, being a chef is uh, sexy. Being a chef is this and that. Being a chef, <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah. And these people have no idea that. Listen, you want to become a chef? I, uh, work. It's hard work. Like crazy, you know. Yeah. It, and it's and and you can only enjoy the hard work and the gruesome if if you really love this. And so I'm never I'm I'm never for these competitions and and whatever for the base fact that they make they make they make us think, you know, like we're sort of larger than life yeah. and this mm -hmm. type of stuff, you know, they're, they're not intended for education, sure. they're inten intended for entertainment. And we have people building the reality of how From it's going to be yeah. based, based off of that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just, it's just crazy, you know, and I tell my people, um, I just, stop posting stuff on Instagram, go in your kitchen and, and you know, work, try to create. Yeah. You, you'll realize it might take you six months to just create something to the way you wanted it, you know? And, 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 and that's time. You're wasting if you're like this all the time. No one wants to are really working and making a change. Are not on, on 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 media doing all of this stuff okay i'm interested in what you're saying don't you think that it's important for a chef to uh be on social media i'm really interested in your point of view because nowadays it's like instagram and facebook are doing everything you know if you're not if you say that you're a chef and you're not on instagram you don't have pictures you don't have photos of what you're doing it's like you don't exist what do you what do you think of that Um, I actually think the great ones mm -hmm. have far much less activity on media, but they're so known within their client base mm -hmm. that they do not have to do all of this thing. Because look, look at Instagram and social media has now turned into, it's a contest of, you know, hey, look at me, I'm here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a rat race, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a rotaries and, 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 and tell me how, how you have the time to sit and think of a concept, Ali, of a concept. 
while you're while you're you know you're having to to check how many likes did i get oh i got 100 but ali got 200 is she more popular will she get more people at the end of the day um you you will find um you don't really need 10 million likes or followers you will realize 100 loyal people who've come and tasted your stuff and see your concept will do all the marketing for you and and with this they they're not coming because they saw you on instagram so they're not coming based on potential to potentially see what can happen they're coming and coming back and telling people because they actually came and your stuff was so good that they saw there's a need for other people to that's the greatest form of having your craft being recognized than anything else. So it's a I think it's a it's a it's a fight between being really good against being very popular. So it's yeah. okay. one of these okay. two things. And and one must choose very early on where they yeah. want to lie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's talk about COVID nineteen now. <laughs> how how is it yeah, for you? Because oh you have because <laughs> you have you have all those restaurants you opening, those you've already opened. So how is it how is it for you in Kenya? How was it before? The first time when it started, I think it was February March. Yeah, how was it for you to? How did you cope with that? Um, so I, I, it, it was crazy because we opened the first restaurant and we closed down after 14 days. Um, so that was, that was devastating because, um, you know, you're absorbing the shock. You're real, you, you're starting to think what the heck is going on. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of panic in this moment. And, 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 and so what, so what I do or I did is. I shut off all news completely because yeah. I didn't want That's to get into the yeah. level loop. And, and with that, of course, you get a whole lot of peace. And, and I was able to really analyze how and what I want. Um, it, it's a good thing. I mean, I thank God that for a while, the landlord was, was very helpful because he waived the rent for the restaurant for a while. That is nice, yeah. Uh, but then when I was really able to think to myself, like, um, look, this thing won't last forever. Um, I didn't want to do any deliveries. So I didn't do any deliveries. I mean, I was willing to take the loss. And I, Why? And I Why thought, did okay. Because uh, 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 I, did, I, I didn't want to compromise the identity so early on. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't want to do sense. that. Yeah. And, so, and so I was like, I think this thing will ease up later on. So before it eases up, I took the very bright idea and I said, let me open <laughs> the other restaurant, which is, which is crazy, which landed me in hospital, actually, because I think I, I took on a lot, a whole lot. And uh, I think one night my body just pooped. Oh, End of story. Okay. Yeah. But then uh, I came back and, and, now, and now I think the decisions are paying off, you know. Um, here we're allowed to open. Uh, the cafe is at 11, and of course, following a few rules here and there, and it's 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 good. It's not as great as it could be, but it's still something, and it's nice, you know. And so this is why now I said, okay, let me open number three. Yeah. So uh, how are how are how are people like people coming to the restaurant and everything? Are they are they um, how can I say that? For example, here, people, most of the people at the beginning didn't want to go to restaurant if you're not wearing masks, if you're not wearing clothes, if they don't have like sanitizer and everything. Is it the same over there or people are more relaxed, more cool about it? <laughs> here, here, people are crazy. Um, <laughs> you, you, have you have both sets of people. Um, yeah. You have guys who are so, so afraid, you know? They have the whole mask and the whole thing and da 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 and they come there and they, hey, distancing mm -hmm. some are even distancing with people they walked in with which is crazy. okay <laughs> okay but, but you have but you have another crop my goodness 
<laughs> that is crazy, you know? <laughs> that were locking themselves inside bars when there was coffee and this type of stuff. So you have oh, wow. okay. you have a little bit of both and mm-hmm. it's 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 a little bit funny funny to watch. So we it's 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 a balance between actually both both people, but um the precautionary measures are there from the yeah. side of the establishment. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to make sure we don't land in in the necessary problems. Okay, but you yeah. you you are opening number three. Does it mean that the economic is back on track in Kenya or? Um, no, not not really. Um, but I'm opening number three because of two things. Um, because number one, the biggest thing I fear is regret. You know, okay. and so for me the. There's a, there's a small window of opportunity to be able to do it and say, okay, I did it, I failed, it's, it's okay. Then to let this tiny window, I, I've realized, I think, from my experience, uh, n- not to really trust a lot of people on, on television, like economists and this type of people, because based on my, based on, yeah. based on my experience, there, there have been times where people are like, there's no money, da 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 da. But I was charging uh, my dinners like eighty-five dollars per person for the embark, and people were paying, and we were getting bookings, and it was full. And yeah, it was okay. so, yeah. for me, I tend to, I'd like to make the analysis myself, and based on what I've analyzed, I think, I think we'll not be, we we, we won't suffer, we won't like be hit hard. Yeah, but yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Let's you know. Let's open and see. Let's 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 risk risk it. And how is the how is the culinary scene uh, in general affected, like in Kenya? Because, for example, here in Arigos, like I was saying before, like the business is really slow. It's really really slow. It's only on weekend that we are like going okay. So how is it? How is it for you? And how is it for others in Kenya? Um, I think the culinary scene has two points of affection. Uh, one negative, one positive. The negative is on the worker. I think a lot of people lost their jobs. Yeah. Down, which was very unfortunate. But in terms of the of the of the of the guests and the patrons, I think it's it's seventy five percent. I'd say back to normal so they're the ones on the positive end of of receivership in this moment because the joints they used to go to are open and restaurants are open now hotels are open they have much more variety from places that they never had the option of maybe takeaway or deliveries and this type of stuff so it's 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 a positive as we speak it's a positive for the guests and for certain business owners but so far it's really been negative on hotel and restaurant employees and say so it cuts both ways in this year. and how how long were you closed how long were your restaurants closed, closed? situation now how uh, long personally for me it closed march april may june five months in five months yeah that's a lot that's quite a lot five months yeah 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 that was uh, i think a crazy crazy very crazy So, so what what did you do the during the, what did you do during those five months? What did you do? Uh, I, I kept on I kept on developing recipes and developing like the ideas mm-hmm. the ideas that I that I have. Um, more, basically, I kept doing this. So I'll show you an example. Like now, I'm developing one of. the ideas for okay this is what i just do all the time all the time in my free time so i developed a lot of recipes i developed the the uh what do you call it development logs of my of my team um yeah more or less just things revolved around the spectrum by which we operate nice but you because a lot of chefs i saw a lot of chefs like went on doing live cooking 
doing, uh, um, you know, um, like Daniel Fries, you said no, but like live cooking on Instagram, on social media, you, you didn't do all that. You just stayed home and then cook at home. Oh, no, no. 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 <laughs> this, no is, I, this is not I, your I, thing. In fact, I su- this is not my thing and I, <laughs> I suck at social media like crazy. <laughs> and, 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 and for me, <laughs> for me, I don't know, I, I wouldn't enjoy I I, yeah. I don't enjoy like interviews or social or this and that, so I just stay away from that so okay. much, mm-hmm. and 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 do and do other things. Yeah. Okay. So what what is your favorite time during uh during um during the uh how do you say that during your your um, your favorite time during the service? You know. When you start, when you start, I don't know what time you start. If you start at eight till the end, what is your favorite part of the of the of the service? Um, so, my so I'll start with the most. I think the most the most heart thumping time is when we serve the first course because then you can see you can gauge you can know if you got the the guest there or not. So that's very, it's usually, you know, you feel the butterflies. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd say if two hours into service is usually one of the best moments. And I say this because um, if you look at at, at most kitchens, it's within the two, two and a half hour mark after service where people start to lose concentration or make silly mistakes or be absent-minded and this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so... At the two hour mark, we usually have this thing within my team where where we call it out. say, yeah, it's two hours. We're maybe in course number four. Uh, guys, we need to, you know, start to go into second gear. And 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 I love it normally because now we start to get really ferocious. We start to push really hard. Uh, you could see people literally uh-huh. yeah. starting to exactly to fight, to fight the fatigue mm-hmm. that they're starting to to feel. And to be able to see the team and people do this under under that pressure, but do it with so much grace and 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 power and 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 effort is is usually one of the best uh, sights uh, for me. You know, it feels and so like it's, having it's, superpowers. You know, <laughs> you can exactly, find everything. <laughs> exactly, exactly, That's exactly like a exactly <laughs> exactly. You know, you you feel this, and and the worst the worst time is when the last guest leaves because yeah, and it's over. now you've been working on down. adrenaline and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. um, I don't think anyone really is able to, um, to master that. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's always the crazy. worst part. Yeah. I agree with mm-hmm. that. <laughs> always. <laughs> and, uh, are you, uh, I mean, you, you, the head chef, right? Are you still able to cook? Like in your restaurant, or you are mostly supervising. Oh, I, I listen. I, I even cut onions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <laughs> because I'm afraid. I, I I I I said since the beginning. I don't want to be a Google chef. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to. Uh, I I care a lot about skill and technique. Mm-hmm. And so I want to be. I want to be a great. I want to be a great manager, a great supervisor, great whatever. But at the same time, I also want to be a great craftsman. Yeah. We we we're, in a, we're living in a we're living in a world now where the word art is thrown out there like crazy, and you have everyone wishing to be an artist and no one wishing to really develop the craft. I don't want to fall that, to this yeah. bracket. So I do I do I do everything that a chef can do. I mean if. I, I I wash whatever during prep. I wash what I use. Sometimes yeah. I'll not say all the time, but sometimes yes, sometimes, yeah. I do so. So I think it's important. I, I don't want to lose. But how do you, uh, how do you balance? Because I I guess that sometimes you have to you have to do some paperwork. Sometimes you have to be out of the kitchen. So how do you how do you balance? Um, I think I think sleep less. And increase your competence, <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> I okay. think that's one. And and number two is that uh, that uh, my fiance works with me, and 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 you know for the thing.
things like paperwork and having to deal with a with uh, to 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 help. So, like I would, depending on the type of paperwork, uh, she would offload. Uh, she would take half, and I would take half. You know, okay, and 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 this allows for more time. But but I also create a lot of time for that because I realize um, there's a price to pay for everything. You know, if I want to be good at both, I'll have to expend some more time towards both and some less time between be, towards some other things so it's a that's a price that i am willing to pay every day with no problem and um are you your your people is your your team like very uh receptive do they do, you, do they like are they able to learn a lot from you to like are they like you know going the way you want them to go and then learning and then do you think that you can trust them like 100 if you're not there One thousand percent, because okay, I'll great. tell you something. Um, there are some instances where they have been in the kitchen without me being there. Okay. Okay, and and the reception is always amazing. I mean, by this time we, I I I, I care a lot about their the development of their brain, and at this point, we we think towards the same path. You understand. And so with such people, I'm pretty sure that they will deliver on whatever I tell them. Plus the passion is there. So I'll give you a, a small story about one of my team members who was hospitalized for, I think, a week, a week and a half. And, and two, two, two Tuesdays ago, he was in the hospital bed. He, he, he had a blood transfusion on Monday night. And on Tuesday morning, He called at 8 a.m. and say, "Hey guys, um, make sure you kick ass today. Uh, like, <laughs> don't let me down." Yeah, <laughs> and That it's crazy. Nice. So this are ta- this are the team, team members. Yeah, it's a exactly. Great team this spirit. this That is nice. Yeah, these are the guys, and so I'm also very careful by how I recruit because I mm-hmm. like to hunt peak a lot. How how do you recruit? Because we talked about culinary school before. So how how do you find people that really have that passion? Um, I, I look. I look at where the interest lies because skill, skill you can teach. Technique you can teach. Um, you you cannot teach someone how to how to find solutions in a certain aspect. I mean, they're able to do this if they're really interested. They they people say effort follows interest, correct? And so, if you're able to see where the interest point is when they want to join your team, you can easily identify what buttons you have to push, what buttons you have to develop in a, mm-hmm. for you to be able to have this person align with the, with the vision. So I don't look at the CV. I don't care about previous experience. I look at the level of interest this person has within the vision or the cohort of what we want to achieve. So what, how, how is an interview with you? You ask them to cook or how is it? Like a typical no. interview with you. A, tip, a typical interview with yeah. me. Um, I would, I will invite you to the kitchen, mm-hmm. and you will work with the team that day. Mm-hmm. And in the evening, I'll ask the team, "Do you think if this person joins you, you'll be better off or worse off?" And 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 they're gonna say um, yes or no. Like I'll give you one instance. There was one person who was who wanted to be sous chef, uh, and he came and he worked with the team. And mid service, not even at the end of service, mid service, the Komi chef said, "Dennis, I think this person will slow us down. Is gonna take us ten steps backwards. I don't yeah. think we want to work with him." With him. <laughs> and that okay. was it. He was gone exactly. And so this is what I do because at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Uh, while you're in the weeds or in the trenches or whatever, they're able to see how you make decisions. And this this decision will affect the next person yeah. Yeah. nearly immediately, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that's what I used to, to gauge. And after that, then when they come to me, I just, it's just getting to know um, this person and what makes them tick, you know? And it doesn't have to be related to, to food actually. I love I love thinkers. I love I no, okay, not thinkers, but I love people who love to actualize. Uh, I use the brain. People who use their brain actually use the brain. Exactly. Yeah. 
exactly and, and not use the brain just to come up with an idea but mm -hmm. use the brain to make the idea work yeah. those are my favorite type okay. of people okay. yeah. i think we are running out of time right yes uh, yes, yes, it's uh, it's nearly the, the end. <laughs> so I, oh, yeah. I, I have a, a gift to for you, Denis, and I, I ah, just want to show you, you and uh, and I will send you by uh, by email after. It is uh, okay. it is a picture. Uh, I, I I I have to try to share my screen. Oh no, off disabled. Uh, <laughs> can you can you give me the, the right to um, to share a screen, Alison? You, you sure. know how, how do I do that? No, I don't. Um, uh, how do I do that? Uh, maybe uh, if, if you go to my 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 pictures and maybe yeah. you can you can give me some uh, some okay uh, so authorization. Okay, I'll yes. do that right now. Um, I don't know how to do that. Well, okay, fine. But it was it was a picture of you. It was something drawn. Oh, okay. Not... <laughs> so I I I will uh, it's 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 shame because I want to share the picture with everyone. But uh, I will send <laughs> you the picture, and uh, it's okay. uh, it's it's really funny, and uh, I just want to share it uh, with you. Okay. Perfect. I'll be okay. waiting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, Alison. Okay, so thank you very much, Dennis, for your participation. I had an amazing Anytime. time. You are very too, inspiring. So uh, thank, thank you. you very much for that. And I'm looking forward to come to Kenya and eat in your restaurant. Yeah, hey, you should, you should, you should. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will, definitely. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very bye -bye. much, Dennis, for your time. Thank you for your time. And, Anytime. Uh, I hope that we can make some uh, things very make make Africa uh, make Africa great again. For sure, <laughs> yes. for sure, for sure, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Again. And let's for sure. let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. Yeah, definitely. Yep, yep. Yeah. We will. We will. Okay. 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 Thank you. So bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.